Ah, uh, good afternoon, good evening, good morning, wherever you are. This is Mr. Shakespeare again with you on the 1st of December 2022. I'm here with psychic medium and remote viewer Liz Cross. How are you doing today, Liz? Um, I'm doing okay, thank you. I'm glad you're feeling better. Yeah, I do seem to be a bit better. I've still got the cough and everything, but uh, getting better, you know. Well, it's going around. I mean, <laughs> we we had it for a month, so... Um, but I'm glad you're feeling better. Bye. Right. Okay. Thank you. Um, right. So this is really a Discord roundup video. We've got a a random uh, bunch of titles that we've got to look at. Okay. And we're going to start with the Digital Currency Group, DCG. Now, this was prompted by a video that we did the other day on its chief executive officer, Barry Silbert, if you remember. We did him. But we, we, we concentrated on, I think, two of the aspects, which was Grayscale and uh, Coinbase. Yes, I remember that video. Um, just so you know, that video yeah. is an exclusive to Patreon members only. Okay. Well, anyway, this one is... This particular uh, viewing is of the DCG, which is the overarching thing that owns everything. So they have a portfolio. And if you scroll down, you can see all the companies that they've been involved in. Hmm. Lots of them. Oh, goodness. Wow. They're into all these companies? Yeah. So now, what are they? Are, just they fund the companies? Some of them are, are nothing burgers. Some of them are just analysis companies. So, you know, they're not all big, but, you know, they're all, they're all under the umbrella of the digital currency group. So wow. what we're looking at today or what we need to look at today is well, let's start with how are the Digital Currency Group doing today? How are the Digital Currency Group doing today? Not good. Okay. Why is that? Why are you not doing good? Uh, they're on the edge. Financially, they're on the edge. The whole group? The whole group. Yes, if you take it as an overall snapshot, an overall picture, yes. Okay, let's take them out then till June 30th, 2023. Okay, so um, DCG, DCG. Oh, okay, uh, June 30th, June 30th, 2023, 2023, 6 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Okay. Has their overall situation improved compared to the 1st of December 2022? Has their overall situation improved? Bless you. Compared to the 1st of December 2022. No, not really. Has it got worse? Has it gotten worse? It's about the same. Are any of your entities that you control under the threat of bankruptcy or Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection. Chapter 11 bankruptcy. Several. Uh, what was the second part of that question? So have they any of them under bankruptcy or Chapter 11 bankruptcy? Which is different. I feel like they like to go with Chapter 11. Have any of them actually filed for that? Several. When did they do that? When did they file for Chapter 11 bankruptcy? When did, when did the vast majority of those companies 
Expo for Chapter 11. Jan uh, January for tax purposes. I don't yeah. know what that means, but that was the answer. So they're, they're going into Chapter 11 protection, bankruptcy protection, for tax reasons? No, no, but that's why they chose January to file as opposed to now. I don't know what that means. Oh, right. I don't but, either. Yeah, somebody will know. They'll probably tell well, us. The tax year is at the end of the year. I get that. But, I, I mean, if you're filing for Chapter 11 bankruptcy, why does it matter when you go? I don't know. You have to file in the new tax year. There'll be some sort of law around that. Somebody will know. They'll let us know in the comments or on the Discord. Right. Has anything got, has this got anything to do with um, FTX and Alameda Research? Alameda Research, rather. Um, only a small portion of that. This is just the overall market in general. Has Coinbase been one of the ones that have filed? Has Coinbase filed for bankruptcy? No, but it's getting close. It feels like it's getting very close. Grayscale filed? Grayscale filed. Uh, yes, I feel like uh, did Grayscale file for Chapter 11? I feel like it did. Okay. Hmm. It's very close. They're on the wire. A lot of these are on the wire. Okay. What about Bitwalla? Bitwalla? What is that? Is that an exchange? Blockchain banking out of Germany, apparently. What does that mean? Banking on the blockchain. Okay. <laughs> Clear as mud. Well, that, like it says here, use BitWallet to pay for pretty much anything that requires a Euro bank transfer. So, oh, okay. yeah, I think it's a Euro connection into Bitcoin and things. I have heard of it, but I've never really researched it. Okay. Is BitWallet, uh, is that for See, No, that one's doing okay. Okay. What about... Um, Blockchain.com. How's that doing? No, that's that's bad. That's not doing well. Okay. Um, Coinbase, Coindesk, Coinflex. Oh God. See, a lot of these are research and things. Research. Yeah, they do a lot of research. I think. Oh, what about eToro? eToro? Um, what about eToro? How's that doing? It's not good. Has that filed for Chapter 11? Bankruptcy, has that filed? No, but that one's down to the wire. Hmm. FTX is showing under the digital currency group portfolio. Why would that be? Have they any kind of ownership of FTX? Yes, they invested in it. Okay. And did they also invest in Genesis? Did you also in Genesis, yes. How's Genesis doing? How's Genesis doing? Uh, again, down to the wire. Okay, put them out to December 28, 2023, please. December. DCG. December 28, December 28, 2023, 2023. 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Okay. How many of their associated ent entities have gone either bankrupt or filed Chapter 11 bankruptcy in the last year? How many? About 30. 
That's not good. Not good at all, no. They invest in a lot of businesses. That's what I'm getting. Yeah, I think they do. They're like a massive investment group. Hmm. Wow. I didn't realize they invested in Kraken. How's, was Kraken one of the businesses that have gone under in bankruptcy? No, it's solvent. I had no idea they owned so many. Or well, they invested in so many. Mm. That's surprising to me. Look at that, Nomics. That's who we probed the other day. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, they're just a market data company. So, you know, it's not like. Mm -hmm. Well, that one was interesting. NFT Bank. Did that go bankrupt? Or chapter 11? Did that go chapter 11 bankruptcy? Did it file NFT bank file for chapter 11? Did it go bankrupt? Yes, it's gone bankrupt. No surprise there. Well, I did put out when all the NFT hype was going around. If you remember, Mr. Shakespeare, a long time ago, I put out that this NFT stuff was going nowhere. And everybody was no Liz you're wrong you're wrong you're wrong because I've just put everything I own into NFTs right but I did get it was going nowhere and then when I probed out to 2030 that even most of the NFTs were worthless um, I, so yeah. I think the, I think the NFTs were one giant money laundering operation okay. so I, I create a JPEG yeah Mr. Shakespeare's world-renowned special JPEG. Nobody <laughs> else to pay $48 million for it. And everybody in the art world goes, wow, look at that. It's just money laundering, isn't it? Mm. It's a scam. So, all right. Um, is the digitally, little, digital currency group in any other danger other than... What I'm trying to say is world companies, the 30 companies that have filed for bankruptcy or Chapter 11 protection, is that going to bring down the rest of the group or will the digital currency group survive? Does the digital currency group survive? Yes, it does survive. And what's happened to its coin, the USDC coin? Ooh, what's happened to your USDC coin? Is it is it any good? No, it's not really any good. Okay. It's not backed by anything. No. Um, well, we've asked this yesterday, but I'm just going to extend this out for this one point. Has the any as any point in the last year has it the value dropped below ninety five cents? One USDC coin. <coughs> USDC dropped below 95 cents. The value of USDC has it dropped below 95 cents in the past year? Yes. When and by how much? I feel like in the summer, I feel like there's a, a it tanks a bit. Yes. But does it recover? It took a while. Okay. I've always don't. got red flags whenever anybody has asked me to probe USDC. Hello? Can you hear me? Yeah, go on. I'm sorry. I've always gotten red flags whenever anybody has ever asked me to probe USDC. And I don't okay. know why. Okay. All right. 
So we've pretty much got the answers to that. Okay, so we can drop the digital currency group. Okay. And we're now going to pop across the water to Australia. Uh oh. Uh oh. That easy. <laughs> this is the digital surge company. Okay. How are they doing today? I feel I don't know why I got the word gone. 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 As in, they are no longer in existence. Gone. Existence? No, we still exist. What do you mean by gone? They're bankrupt. Oh dear. Super Digital Surge. I don't even know who they are. Nor do I. It was one of our uh, uh, Discord people who asked about that. Um, can you put them out to the end of February, please? 2023, last day of February. Okay, so February. It's not a leap year, is it? No. Well, I'll just do 28. 28 is fine. February 28th, February 28th. 2023, 2023, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Okay. Um, are they still in existence? And is Digital Surge still in existence? Yes. Can customers withdraw money to the to their bank account currently? Customers withdraw money to their bank accounts from digital surge. Only a very small amount. Okay. As are they in any form of bankruptcy protection, or as the Australian government stand have, have they had to stand in or do anything to help? No, there's no protection. Have you gone bankrupt? We're bankrupt. Um, has the Australian government stepped in? They're being investigated. What about the customers who have got their super fund stuck in, you know, invested or stuck in with digital surge? What's going to happen to the super funds? What's a super fund? I have no idea, Liz. Someone's asked me the question. Okay. What about the customers that have their super funds gone? Gone? Gone is the answer I got. Oh dear. So let's let's put a disclaimer in. Okay. This what I do notice with the future self information or the future information coming back, that is based upon the probabilities of today's information. Now that timeline could very well change. Because uh, I don't want to cause a load of panic and fear, right? So it could be that maybe somebody comes in, salvages the situation, uh, takes over the, I think it's an exchange from the front page. That's what it looks like. That could very well happen. But based upon today's probabilities, where it is today, going out into the future, it looks like it's bankrupt. Okay, right. Um, two more questions. Put it out to the 28th of December, 2023. Okay, December 28th, December 28th, 2023, 2023, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Okay. Are they still in existence? Uh, digital search still in existence. Not available to the public. So... In other words, yes, as an entity, they still exist. But as a public forum or a public usage entity, no. Right. Ask them, has the Australian government had to step in and come up with crypto regulations as a result of what's happened to digital surge? That's right. 
as a result what happened to digital search. Not directly related to digital search. Have there been more regulations in Australia with regards to crypto? Yes, I feel like Australia has now put in some quite heavy regulations. Right. Okay. Uh, thank you very much for that one. We can drop them now and we move to another one. Okay. I've heard of this iTrust Capital. This is where you can put your stuff in an I. Sorry, your four hundred one k. I never understood this very well, um, but I've heard people talk about it. What is this? Um. Well, on the face of it, it's a trust group that you can invest your. I think it goes further than just normal stock market things. But you can you can transfer your um, IRAs over, but you can actually invest in cryptos and gold using your IRA, as it says on there, which is quite unique. Mm -hmm. So but we need to let's ask them about that. Right. Have you got a connection with them, please? Yes, I do. How are they doing today? Well, they're doing very well. The reason they do so well is that most of the people leave their stuff in for the long term. It's not a real trading exchange. No. So people are throwing money in and they're not withdrawing it. Right. So when in other words, it's time to withdraw. Sorry. I'm sorry. I, I, I talked over you. Please uh, repeat. Yeah, in other words, real investment. In other words, not, you know, for the long term, that's what an investment is. It used to be five years is classed as an investment. So people are leaving things in there, yeah? Yes, but that's why they're successful. If right. they were an exchange which was, you know, um, banking on, you know, trading or people being – you know, pulling out of their funds due to knee-jerk emotional reactive responses, yeah. then it would be in dire straits just like the rest. Right. Okay. Well, that's good because you can hold gold in there at 50 over spot, silver in there at $2.50 over spot. That's good. Okay. What does that mean? It means that when you buy the product, silver, you take the market price on the day that you put in and they charge $2.50 an ounce premium over the spot price for silver and $50 an ounce premium over the spot price for gold. Okay, let's ask this question. If I was to buy gold through your iTrust Capital, is it actually backed by gold? No. Okay, let's ask that killer question then. If I was to ask, if I was to invest one thousand dollars, and I'm buying gold, how much of it is gold? What's the, you know what is the percentage? If I invest one thousand dollars in gold, what percentage of it? <gasps> oh. Oh, this is like FTX. Okay, this is on par with FTX uh, percentages. 2%. Wow. Ask the same question for silver. Uh, if I was to buy $1,000 worth of silver, what would be the percentage of silver that I actually own? 3%. So they're doing fine now because people do not actually pull out their money. But there's no liquidity there. Right. That's that's really bad. That's dangerous. Okay. Ask them this question. If I buy a thousand dollars worth of gold and only two percent is gold, what happens to the rest of the money? Where does that go? What do they do with it? What do you do with it's used for operations. It's used for expenditures. 
um, paying staff, running the exchange, running the platform, uh, paying the light bill, it's telling me, the water bill. Wow. So even though we're getting very positive vibes back in the here and now, which is, yeah, we're doing great. Behind okay. all, there's no yeah. liquidity. Right, but again, they work on the fractional reserve system like so many things do. Um, hmm. The only yeah, slight... Their fractional they're not, reserve is low. Yeah, so they're not a trading platform as such. So people who go into this, I bet they don't know that they've only 2% liquidity or 3% on silver. But no, they think it's a, you know, a heavy-duty 401k. Right. What if I right. had... $100,000, hold on. What if I had $100,000 in my 401k now and I wanted to pull it out? No, they don't want you to do that. They don't want you to pull all that money out at once. I feel that there's going to be guidelines on pulling out the money. Right. I feel they're only going to allow you to pull a percentage out. That's a huge red flag. This is not good. Nope, not at all. Put them out a year, please, Liz. 28th of December, 2023. Yeah, December 28th, December 28th, 2023, 2023, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Okay. How are they doing now? How are you doing now? Uh, the whole world. See? This is what I'm getting. The whole world has gone up in smoke. I've had this so many times when I've probed crypto. What about you? I trust capital. What about you? Your operation. Are you still in business? Yes, they're still doing very well. But why are you still doing very well? Because people are not withdrawing their money. There you so go. Because people are not withdrawing their money, they're doing fine. Right. Yeah, that's how you can get away with running that kind of business on 2% liquidity. Well, that's the same, um, you know, same business model as FTX. Right, but FTX was a trading exchange and people, you know, and don't forget, nobody knew about FTX until that tweet came out. And then, you know, if everybody knew that I Trust Capital only had 2% liquidity, there'd be a run on them because most people don't know that. Well, our group does. <laughs> they will now. That's why, you know, you pay to be on these groups that um, the, the information is priceless. This is dangerous. So I would say, and I mean, I'm not a financial advisor, but uh, I would not have my money on this. No. I would not have my money anywhere where it didn't sit in a wallet and I was able to control it. I would not just openly... Certainly with crypto, openly put, you know, money into an exchange. Now that we know what the exchanges are doing, this is terrible. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Okay, we can drop them. Okay. Um, I'm going to look at a couple of hardware wallets. First one being Trezor. Okay. How is Trezor doing today? It's down. Profits are down. <coughs> is that because people are not buying their wallets? their hardware wallets mostly yes because again this business model is banking on new people coming into the space yeah yeah okay put them out a year please 28th of december 2023 6 p.m eastern standard time okay how are they doing today? Down. Crypto is down. Sales are down. Okay. Has there been any hacks 
on any of their wallet platforms in the last year? Yes, yeah, several. Major hacks? No, nothing major. Has anybody lost any of their cryptos on their wallets due to a fault of Trezor or, you know, not their, not, not the individual's fault, but the code or something like that? Has anything gone wrong? Has anything gone wrong with the program on Trezor that has caused people to lose money from their wallets? No. It's usually user error. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I know that. I don't actually know how these wallets work. Can you explain? Sure. Um, they use the phrase wallet, but they're not really a wallet. What they are is just a reflection of what's on the blockchain allocated to your address. Wallets don't actually hold anything. These wallets don't actually hold anything. All they do is give you access to your address on the blockchain for whichever particular coin you're talking about. And it, and it shows you that you've got one Bitcoin and two Ethereum or something like that. The good thing about it is, is because the private keys are on this on these devices, you have to have these devices to basically make an adjustment of the blockchain. So if I wanted to send you half a Bitcoin, I'd have to go into my Trezor and put your address in and then agree to, you know, confirm which is then sending a message back to the blockchain, change the allocation of half a Bitcoin from Mr. Shakespeare to Liz. Everything is done on the blockchain with these wallets. These are just a reflection of your account on there. They don't actually hold anything themselves. And we know that because if you buy a Trezor or any of the other main wallets, I, I personally like Trezor. I've, I've had them since the beginning. They're my favorite wallet. Um, Oh, my favorite device, let's put it that way. If you buy one of these and you accidentally run it over with your pickup truck and then you get on a plane and go to New Zealand, as long as you've got another Trezor and you put in all the private your seed words and everything, you can basically restore what they call restore the wallet. But you haven't restored anything, really. You're just accessing the blockchain from somewhere else in the world. Yeah. But where the element of control that you have, which you do not have on any exchange, is that you have what they call private keys. So there are public and private keys. The public keys are the address, that your wallet address, which you can give to anybody, your Bitcoin wallet address, your Ethereum wallet address. But then you have the private keys behind it, which is what these devices are basically involved in. That's a very simple overview of it, but that's what they do. And so in cryptos, there's many times people say, not your keys, not your coins. And this is what they mean. If you don't have access to your private keys, that means you don't have access to your coins. So if you have your coins on an exchange, any exchange, centralized exchange, you get a wallet address. Yeah, that's the public side of it. But because they are all run on a ledger, they don't run actually on the blockchain. They can't give you the private keys to that. And as we all know, they all run on a fractional reserve basis anyway. See our earlier video to the liquidity ratios on all the major exchanges. So, But these are the safest places, generally speaking, to guard your own cryptos. Right. Well, what was so puzzling about that, Mr. Shakespeare, is the fact that you have a pickup truck. No, I don't actually have a pickup truck, but I put I that because one in three vehicles in the U.S. is a pickup truck. So as most of your audience are American, I just thought I'd throw that in for you. Oh, well, I do like that. But, uh, yeah, I was about to say, you have a pickup truck. <laughs> I don't. That's funny. That's funny. But, yeah, that's great. Thank you for that explanation. I could have said you could have run it over with your Harley, yeah, or your scooter. Or your Lexus. You know, I could have used anything. But I didn't. I used pickup truck. That's the kind of guy I am, Liz. That's awesome. Uh, any other questions? Nope, not for them. You can drop them. And we're going to go to these people now. Okay. 
Okay. Hang on, I haven't got that yet. I think it's ledger.io, but I might be wrong. No, it's not. Right, this is Ledger. This is one of the other hardware wallets. Look, there are lots of hardware wallets that have been around. These two have been around the longest. Um, they all do the same job, pretty much. Um, I have personal experience of Ledger and um, Trezor because those are the ones I've had since pretty much the day these companies launched. So these are the ones that I sort of stick with because um, these are the ones I know. Out of the two, I just prefer the Trezor interface, but Ledger's fine. I still use it. So um, can we get, a, can we get a, a connection with Ledger, please? Yes. How are they doing today? Again, business is down. Their sales are down. Uh, again, it's banking on new people coming into the space. Uh, it's just not working out for them. Right. Okay. Uh, put them forward to the 28th of December, 2023, please. December 28th, 2023. 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Okay, what would you like to know? How are they doing now? No, business is still down. Okay, has there been any major hacks of the Ledger platform in the last year? Major hacks in the Ledger platform in the last year. Have there been major hacks? Not major, no. Okay. Has there been hacks where, you know, customers have lost coins, but not through customer fault? I'm sure there's lots of people who have done that, but anything to do with the Ledger platform or the Ledger wallets or the Ledger device? <coughs> no. Okay. Okay. Um, all right. Well, that's good because both wallets are, sorry, both platforms are still alive and kicking, which is good. There's been no major hacks, which is good. Um, so that's, yeah. All right. I'm happy with that. Right. The last one in our little roundup group. Bane of my life. <laughs> Where is it? Okay. Shiba token. Yeah. Is that different from Shiba Inu? No, this is no, this is it. Oh. This is the one that we've done ad infinitum over the last god knows how long this one and doge oh dear anyway um right but this is a specific question can you grab shiver please yes are they in discussions with the world economic forum are you in discussions with the world economic forum? no have they been in, uh, involved in discussions with them have you been involved in any discussions in the World Economic Forum? No. Okay, put them out a year, 28th of December, please, 2023. Okay. Are they, have they been, or sorry, are they, how do we ask this? Are they in any kind of partnership with the World Economic Forum? No. Have they been approached in the last year by the World Economic... Sorry, in the last year and a half by the World Economic Forum? 
No. All right. That's all I need to know. What was all that about? <laughs> Somebody on Discord posted a link to something where apparently there was a rumor or they're supposed to be getting together. I didn't see it myself, but I thought we would debunk it. Oh, um, okay. Yeah, I was, I've never, I didn't see that one. So I, I thought, oh gosh, that's bizarre. Um, yeah. Okay. No, the World Economic Forum, let's probe the World Economic Forum. Do you want to have anything to do with crypto? They don't want anything to do with crypto. No, I didn't think they would. <laughs> That's what I got. Having something to do with crypto, this is what I'm getting, is giving power to the people. And that's not what they're about. No, they're not about that. Not Does about, that make sense? Makes total sense. The WEF are definitely not about giving power to people. The WEF is all about keeping power, giving power to themselves. Right. Because crypto is power to the people. That's right. Mm, okay. Okay, that's all I have for the um, Discord Roundup video. <laughs> Discord Roundup. Oh, well, thank you very much. Um, just to reiterate, today's date is December the 1st, 2022. This video will be released to Patreon subscribers only. If it does happen to make the public pages of YouTube at some point, know that this video is old and if you want to be a member of patreon and to get this exclusive information a lot of information is released for members only you go to patreon forward slash remote viewing and beyond thank you very much